stored away of bad spirits and evil things and fairies in some cases or anything that was going to do with uh, chill on you. Traditionally, the best time to, to pull this was on um, E feel you on, the, the night before um, Tinled Day or Midsummer's Day as it would be at that point and you had to pull it up by the roots at midnight and if you did that you had the power for the, for the whole year, you had a good power for the year. There are a lot of stories about uh, about the ball and bear. They're not directly about the herb, but they're about a fairy tune known as ball and bear. Ball and bear was the, the name of the great fairy tune, the great elusive fairy tune that every fiddler worth his salt wanted to know, and many seemed to claim um, they had indeed found it. There is, there is a version of, of the story um, when there's a, a farmer well, the shepherd really, who was going out onto the hills with his um, dog, out uh, all day after the sheep, and um, it was getting towards night, and he knew he was going to be stuck up on the hills of an evening. That's not a good place to be, um, not when there's uh, all kinds of uh, strange beings around. Um, so he plucked some ball and bear, and he put this in his jacket. He was. Uh, later than he expected and the dog was running all over the place and uh, he had to pick up the dog in the end it was so tired slugging it over his shoulder and um, off, off he went slowly home but um, as he was going over a certain part of the hills he heard some distant music and, uh, and he stopped and he listened and he thought I must get that tune that's, that's, that's the best tune I've ever heard so he went closer to the source of the music and he realised that he'd come across themselves up there and they were all great fiddlers, the fairies, you see, and they were dancing and singing and there was this tune and they thought I'm going to have this. So they didn't know he was there, fortunately, that was probably the protective effects of the herb and he was listening, I thought I've got this, I'm going to go home and I'm going to learn, I'm going to dazzle everybody with this tune. So silently crept off there, dog still over his shoulder, dog, don't know how he kept the dog quiet but must have done. Anyway, he'd not gone too far when uh, he, he thought, right, I'll just see if I can run that tune through my head. And it had gone. So, such was the power of the ball and bear, the ball and bear tune this time back he went. And uh, same spot there, they were all singing and dancing and playing the tunes and this particular tune, there it was again. And this time he thought, I've got it. So, back he goes again dog back on his shoulder <laughs> he was tired awful um goes further he's nearly home and then again the tune is gone so back he goes a third third time and eventually he gets the tune um and and uh, home he goes just in time for dawn so he'd been out the whole night in pursuit of this th this tune and his wife was furious with them and um because it was a Sunday and you shouldn't be going home and practicing tunes on a Sunday and especially not a, a fairy tune I would imagine. There are quite a few stories like that or versions versions of that uh, to be found and apparently they were um, they were taken from people um, in, who, who, who'd experienced these, these things up on the hills probably in the, in the late 19th century so there were quite a few recordings of that so, so watch out and if you do have find yourself on the mountains in the middle of the night and don't know what's happening and you are seduced by a mysterious tune going on make sure you've got some ball and burn on yourself to keep you safe because I don't think the fairies appreciate you pinching their tunes <laughs> Thank you.